Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another fun, fast Tinkercad tutorial. So let's get cracking. Hey, everybody. I saw a post where somebody said, hey, how do you put an opening on the bottom that you can close on a 3D print? I've got a strategy. Let me show you how I did it. First, I'm going to take this little fella that's done. I'm going to move him off to the side, and then I'm going to show you where I found him. I just went to Creatures and Characters. You can click over here to get to Animals, hit more shapes several times, and there is the cute little penguin. I do not know the size the user wanted to make with their part, but I'm going to just show you how I did this. So I am going to shift stretch this guy, and I'm going to go to 90 millimeters and press Enter. Then I want to hollow out the inside. Well, check out this trick. I'm going to return to the basic shapes and I'm going to grab the tube and I'm going to use it to determine just how large this is. Now, I think if we click here, it's close to 70. So what I'm going to do is take my radius and I'm going to make it 30 and press enter. When I bring this close to my shape, let's see how close it is. We cannot align it that way because of the feet. But if we do L for align and align it this way and to the back edge, you can see that's reasonably close. I'm going to switch real quick to a 0.1 nudge and see what that looks if I nudge it over. I'm going to instead try 31 and press enter. Notice that is for sure larger. I can, though, line this up so that it's pretty even. So now those two sides look the same. So instead of 31, I'm going to try 30.5 and press enter. I think that's close enough for what I'm doing. All right, so now that we know 30.5 is the outside, we can hollow them out. Return to your basic shapes, grab your cylinder. A radius of 30 is 60. So we're going to shift stretch this and go to 58 and press enter. That'll give us inside so it won't poke out. And then we'll line it up. I'm going to switch the color so this looks a little easier to see with this one instead of the whole shape. Because those feet and the nose and the beak all mess with centering on that other body. Now we want to put a piece on top to make our project too. We're going to simply use the half sphere, set it on top. Once again, we already know shift stretch 58 is the magic number. We can take those and align them. Two shapes, L for a line, center, and center. We do need to make this one a hole. And then I can take those two shapes, and I'm going to do Control G to make them a single group. So with that little part selected, Shift Select on our cool little tube, L for a line. Tube is the boss. We can go center, and we can go center. Check it out. It fits. Now, if we hit T for transparent, you can see that's reasonably close. I'm going to real quickly hide the penguin part, though, and we're going to raise this up so that we have a bottom in our project. So watch this. Switch back to my one millimeter nudge. and I'm going to do control up one, two. That'll be how far it is raised up. So now I can double click this and I want that to be one lower. So let's go 57. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to do control down so it lowers one click. That pink shows we were editing. I can click somewhere else. And now when we do show all, you can see we have got this piece right here. My old idea where before I had that tube and you can see that hollows out our shape really well. Shut off transparency. Select those two. Notice it says two shapes and do control G to group. Real quickly, let's drive inside just because this is kind of fun. Once I get through the skin, bingo, you can see it's hollow and there is that little shape. We could also go T for transparent and now you can see that it's got that hollow edge. All right, so let me show you how the bottom of this guy works. I'm going to use the sweet mirror tool to flip it this way so that you can see it better. All I am doing is cutting in a hole, giving myself a grip spot adding two little pieces that push through and then watch this if we hide the body you can see this has nice little edges that'll lock in once you spin it let me use that mirror tool to flip them back the way he was and let's put this together over here 
So once again, I'm going to turn that back to solid. Friends, let me show you how we're going to build this. I made a little bit of an upgrade. First, shift stretch to get to 30.5. Make that a hole, but only make it one millimeter high. Now, friends, I'm going to add a second cylinder. I'm going to cruise it right on top. I'm going to shift stretch this one, and I only want it to be 28 and press enter. I'm going to move it towards the middle, and I want it to be one millimeter high as well. So those are a total of two millimeters. I do want to move the sides to the max smoothness. I'm going to keep this shape the way it was. It is going to have a four millimeter gap and that's going to cut a hole so this can slide up in it. Now we did the two pieces here because it's going to leave a lip so this cannot push up too far. We simply grab these pieces at this point and of course choose middle and choose middle and then finally group them. Now we can shift select the pink one, do L for align, make the pink one the boss, choose middle and middle so it's aligned underneath there, just like that. Now if we grab the bottom, you'll see it says three shapes. Well, one of those is the pink one and check this out. I locked the pink one so nothing can happen to it. So when I group it, now we've got that awesome hole with a lip and a locking mechanism for our little penguin. All right, so let me show you how I built this little fella. We're gonna have to ungroup. And then if you look, it is size 30 on a side. Once again, cylinder, shift stretch, and I wanted it a little smaller than the hole. We made the height two and press enter. I wanna make sure the work plane is down here. And let me show you this cool shape. First D to drop, but this is a trapezoid. And because we knew our measurements, I could make the base the exact size. So I put 31. That gives us a tiny lip so it can lock when we twist it. I chose to make it three high right here, all with the parameters. If you ever stretch these handles, it breaks the parameters. And then I did a thickness of four so it matched that hole. I'm going to make this 3.8 just so that it is not extra snug. Notice you have to wait for the parameters to snap into place. There it is. And then I added a couple cylinders underneath. I'm going to quickly switch to a 0.1 nudge, do a couple control down arrows so that it does not poke all the way through. And now when I group it all, we have got a cool little twistable latch. I'm going to quickly put the work plane on the ground. Remember friends, it is shift select. So we get the pink one, L for a line, Pink one's the boss, and we want center, and we want center. And because we used this the whole way through, when we look underneath, it is all lined up, and there's a tiny gap. So I believe we'll even be able to print this in place. I'm going to hide that pink one real quick, even though I leave it there. And I present to you the Penguiny Bank. Once again, the question was, how do you make one of these spinners? So now you've got that answer, and also how to make a cute little bank. Friends, whenever you build something, if you want to show the world, the first thing I do is fix my background so it's cool. Let's give them a nice blue. I do like the custom blues. I think that's pretty decent. I do love to shut off the grid. You get a better view of your cool little creation. Then simply return to the Tinkercad desktop. Make sure your design has a fun name. Of course, mine is gonna have a tutorial in the description. You can also find cool links like how to search for the brand new HLMT 23 shares, and then finally ways to reach me. Do make sure you add fun tags. I've added the penguin bank and the latch mechanism. And then finally, I do want to remind you, if you ever do the tag HLMT 23, and of course, press enter, I search that tag. And of course, when I check out your design, I will give you a reaction. Finally, make your design public, and then I almost always choose attribution, no derivatives, because I do not want users to copy projects. Instead, I want them to come up here, find that awesome tutorial, and gain some epic skills. Lastly, hit save changes. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to take a moment to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. As you can tell, I've got a page dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing lessons. Down below, you can find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. 
Friends, below that you'll find the sweet built-in message tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. I do also need to highlight the link to the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members, and it is a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.